Hello there everyone and welcome back to the TNO, the community expansion mod for Arts of Iron Forum, your host, Mr. Jabalava. But right now, we'll see on Corrupts Our Administration. Situation report at 11.14 p.m. This month's finance report has had an unfortunate discovery. Multiple high-level bureaucrats and underlings have started to receive considerable amounts of money from obfuscated accounts. Further investigation revealed the accounts who secretly belong to various accountants and analysis and employ of Aslan Usuyan. Accounts have been shut down, but there isn't enough evidence to arrest anyone, and it won't be long before they simply open new accounts. Opinion. Usi Yan's web seemed to be more intricate than we previously believed. Although we delayed them from paying out our men in the name of getting them on Aslan's side, you can probably guess this won't stop them very much at all. Us Kurds have to be crafty to survive these days, but Usi Yan seemed to be supersede. Crafty with moves like these. We have to get a grip on our men if we want to stay in power. Sign your friend and Aslan's Usi Yan's secretary as of writing, Leonid Rojav. Start an investigation, we no need to uncover everything. And currently, we are currently maintaining our current administration, which I read last time. If you were to do that one again, please go to head. And other criminal, by the criminal, for the criminal. I believe I read this one as well, but Russia no longer needs authority and figureheads to forge itself. Its thieves can do a much better job than ever they could. Our system will easily prove itself to be the best alternative for Russia out of all the others. Of course. Naturally. And then, of course, I think it is one too. A nation of our own. Regardless of how we end up running the place, we must ensure that all people like us have a place at all. Whether by all the old ways or new, Russia will truly be a nation for us. Whether the madmen, strongmen, pansies, and jackboot uh, liquors of the world like it or not. And there was also another comment saying, um, it was, uh, the GFX dev was watching the last episode. So, to all the, uh, individuals who helped create this mod, if you're watching, thank you very much for, uh, spending time and making this mod. I do appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of people, uh, as well appreciate it too, so. Prisoners no more. With so much done so quickly, we must look back and remember how we got here. It was only through the ingenuity and bravery and sacrifice of a few noble scoundrels that we were even able to be free, much less leaders of a nation, because of them. The peoples of Russia will no longer be forced to wall in poverty, be crushed under the jackboot, or starved under the hammered sickle. No more will we be, free. we be prisoners, and forevermore shall we be free. Nice, so we gotta make sure that for this top, this part of the campaign, Azan does not do very well. So I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should do uh, either path, and you guys kind of recommend I should do both, so we'll see what happens. We'll see. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, especially when we go back and do Azan's path, I'll probably just go ahead and go back to here and do this stuff, and if the stuff doesn't really change too much, actually, you know, we'll probably do the entire thing. Yeah, we'll probably come back and just do the entire thing, just because there's a lot of either ors here, which is pretty nice. It will political power because right now we are authoritarian Democrats, but opposites do not attract. Elo stepped through the door of the office, dodging the blade that flew past his face. Who the F is the Lani slur as he got up from his seat, his hand reaching for the gun, Elo on the other hand smiling back at the great Pakan. Ooh, it's the Tuxedo Thunder Sea. Izzyani's popped back into his seat, clearly not a morning man, considering the light hangover he had. Good morning, Mr. Izzyani. I see you've not lost your reflexes. Ilo swiped some dust off his jacket and corrected his side machinery. No, no, I haven't, and if you don't want him to be used on you, you better start talking, Izzyani sneered as he pronounced the threat, taking a sip of the bottle. We both know the aft situation, the great Pakan cut in. I would say strain, but that is besides the point. Ilo walked up to the desk, placing a paper down. I've come to probe if you were open to a diplomatic resolution, hmm? Izzyliani, Grimace at Elo, sitting, sitting back in his armchair. I know what Izzyliani sees him, himself as, the Thunder at Sea. I, he'd own everything if he could. And if I don't see my life extending far beyond taking power, any power. So, whatever you've written, nah, no, go tell your sugar daddy that I'm not interested. Elo clenched his jaw, leaving the paper lying down, so you you would not even consider looking at it? No. Elo blinked, well, I suppose I should take my lead then. The right-hand man turned on his heel. Yeah, take your blank piece of paper with you. Izzyliani tossed a diplomatic resolution across the table. Across the room. Next time, have the balls to at least fake a cell or call to diplomacy to probe me. Elo did not respond and said, disappearing behind the doors. Nothing uh, unexpected. I'll just make his move. Even though we're pretty good at 80% or just 80. So, uh, now it's probably going to be 75. Yep, 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 yep. Nice. The end of the struggle. This is, I don't know. This is going to take, take a long time. The struggle thing takes a very, very long time to counterbalance. But, uh, economic issue? The West Siberian region is a land of great potential. Factors left over from Bukharin's attempts at modernizing the old Union can be found in every city. Vast forests cover the frigid countryside, and the earth here holds a trove of natural resources and oil, ready to be exploited for our benefit. However, it is also a region that has been mismanaged and torn apart by war. The Bolsheviks and two men ruined the land and starved their people through the laughable five-year plan. A black league stocked about guns without care for the money, never thinking about profit once all that mattered to them was a fanatical great trial. Svetlov's Junto was still tainted by Bolshevism, and so too it suffered from economic issues. We, on the other hand, understand the powers of profit. Soon we will build new factories, create new corporations, and dig deep into the earth until West Siberia has money flowing out of its, her its or hers ears. Nice. We love flowing through the ears. 
market run business, GDP business to boost, technology, technology, all Russian, all Russian oil consortium. Uh, mafia run business. Back in the days of Bukharin's Union, the new economic policy allowed for limited private ownership. A small gem of prosperity within the Byzantine social system that ultimately proved worthless in the face of the German invaders. However, for the thieves, the NEP was our salvation, and many opportunistic businessmen came to pr become profitable associates of ours. We should copy this model and make sure that the thieves and our friends will have the necessary capital and economic freedom to ensure prosperity on their own terms. Keep building, 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 building. <clears throat> raking in the riches. Siberia, though seen by many foreigners as a cold and foreboding place, unsuited for human life, is in fact teeming with the most fabulous quantities of coal, precious metals, ores, and oil that one can imagine. Sadly, the Bolshevik incompetence, rampant warlordism, and the Luftwaffe terror bombings have heavily limited the potential of this region. This ends now. There are enough resources below our feet to ensure our prosperity forever. All we need to do is grab the pickaxes and get our hands dirty, and the thieves will never shy away from some good old hard work. And now we can do more regional development. Just go do all that stuff. That's fine. <clears throat> Very nice. He's making his move. Oh boy. An unexpected investment, eh? There you go. Well, over five billion is not bad. We're still building, 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 which is very good. And cool. Alexander stared at the two mooks sitting at his family table, his wife and children standing to the side, little looks teetering on mute terror. Ah, the owner's here. Come on, come here. The thinner bandit grinned and waved Alexander forward to the table. While his exterior did not did seem friendly, the shop owner could not take his eyes off of the rifle on the bandit's knees. Alexander sat down and interlocked his fingers to control the shaking that entered his hands. G good evening, how may I help you? We've been hearing that your business is struggling, Mr. Korolviev. The taller bandit sat forward, observing the shopkeeper with a uh, saccharine grin. Well, Alexander was about to burst into hopeless tears. They were right, completely right. He didn't have enough, even have enough money to get drivers for good trucks and had to drive them himself, but how could he tell that to the men who took gold and handed out lead at a moment's notice? The shopkeeper sighed, collecting all of his courage. Lying was pointless. He wanted to make sure that whatever happens, he would not be remembered for cowardice. Yes, I'm struggling. Well, that's perfect. Congratulations, Mr. Koroviv. Our local administration has heard these rumors and decided to help. Alexander was stunned. P par pardon? You should be receiving payouts starting next month to keep your business running. Though there is a condition, the taller bandit sat forward. Alexander nodded anxiously, that being the thief, the thin thief chuckled. We order you, you follow us, simple as. Uh oh. Oh boy. Ah, yes. The rates for the girls, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, how strong is Samara? Just because that's. This is not going to be easy fight. This is going to be a difficult fight. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a difficult fight. Uh, that's not good. It's very, very not good. More investment, please. Lots and lots of investments. Oh, can you do anything for now? Okay. Support legitimate businesses. Removes the top's businessmen. It's not bad. Found criminal corporations. Ooh. Uh, legitimate businesses. Well, as much as I like both, I think we're probably going to go with this one for this part of the campaign. Support legitimate businessmen. Oftentimes with business, outsourcing can be cheaper than handling everything by yourself. Keeping it all in the family might make things more certain and secure. But unless we start growing a third arm, there's only so much we can juggle. Outside of the thief circle, there's plenty of individuals with a talent for business that just might be willing to work with us and establish very profitable relationships. We should offer our support, most importantly our money, to these businessmen, no matter how illegal their sort of business might be. After all, we're criminals, no? Nice. Power struggle as well. Thank you. Ooh, down to 15. Very nice. And very nice. Good. Because we still get 1.9 political power every single day, which is awesome. And should be able to do something there soon ish, hopefully. Find the vestiges of Bolshevism. Or end the vestiges. The Bolshevik Revolution was by far the greatest tragedy to befall the Russian people. Though the Tsar was a reactionary fool who hobbled Russia and sent countless thousands to die in his useless wars, the Bolsheviks inflicted countless terrors upon his old people and lost so much of our nation to the Germans, who even we despise as barbarians and destroyed our beloved homes. Most importantly, they didn't have the Russian the right to profit, the one motivation that always ensured victory. We, on the other hand, understand business. We understand money. We are the ones in power now, not the Bolshevik scum. Nice. Keep working on the industry. Lots and 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 lots of industry. Good. It's all good in the neighborhood. Political thought, sure. We're high investment, good, good, good. Yeah. And the vestiges of Bolshevism. Well, we love stability here. We love it. Uh, cool. 
Uh, distribute mining contracts, not bad. The All Russian Consortium. Let's go with distribute mining contracts. You give some, you get some. That's how the world works. If you want to ensure that the already existing mining industries here grow into a pure money machine, we need to reward these friends of the Bratva that will have been so loyal to us since we first freed ourselves from the clutches of Orkuta. Stock certificates and mining contracts will be distributed at competitive prices to those that can afford them, especially those that are our friends. The thieves do not steal from our friends. No, no, no. Very, very good. Discredited opponents. No, hopefully we'll be okay here. Neutral. Influence is okay. Early industrial robots are very good. Ah, yes. Very nice. Azan's making his moves. He's always making moves. He's always dancing. Now he's under 10. If we get to 100, does it end? I hope it ends. Steal every resource. <clears throat> Coal, iron, aluminum, gold, precious metals, oil. It's like reading some babushka's shopping list, except we're the ones doing the selling and we're getting real often rich from it too. Already opportunistic businessmen from within our borders and from the lands beyond even Russia have sought to buy all that we have to offer from our mines and oil fields, and we are more than happy to oblige them. So, long as we keep the mines running and the derelicts pumping, we all have an announced outflow of profit, but why should we settle here? We need to prospect for more resources. We need to dig bigger and deeper and open more mines. Unemployment will be a thing of the past for those that accept the rule of the thieves. The natural wealth of this Western Siberia is ours to steal, and perhaps much... Soon, much, much more. <clears throat> Uso Yan sways the people. Oh no. The uh, situation yesterday morning, Uso Yan was seen making a public appearance. A considerable crowd of people was listening to a speech. Promises of freedom, wealth, and greatness were made by the Kurd, making a huge part of those in attendance flock to his banner or see support of our base. Opinion, well, there's nothing too special about this move. The best we can do is answer by heading our own public campaign. And considering our, your charisma, it shouldn't be too difficult of a task. Sign your friend and Azant Uzoyan's secretary as of writing, Leonid Rojov. You have a point. I'll schedule a public meeting in three days. <clears throat> oh, good, 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 good. Because we need to increase our relations. So we need at least 50 influence. We're getting there. It's taking a while, but we're getting there, man. And the next step. <clears throat> Our sound economic, or, or early economic ventures have so far been a resounding success. Under the wise leadership of the great Pakan, the cities have turned this war-torn wasteland into a land of opportunity. Already the people are forgetting those idealistic promises of the Bolshevik failed saviors. and the vitriolic hate of Yazov's gang, there are only those that we exploit, and those that we offer the opportunity for exploitation, but what now? We cannot possibly stop here. We have the foundations for a free market built, and the resources to do it, but we have to spend our capital somehow. The answer, of course, relies on Russia's two great strengths, agriculture and industry. We shall invest in light and heavy industry alike, from shoe factories to tank plants, and take a delicious slice of the profits. As for the farms down in the countryside, the horrible collectivization policies will be reversed, or at least revised into something that is more profitable to our needs. Let's get back to work and we can pump in even more profits than we ever thought possible. Yes. Yes, that's why I stopped it just in case I do that first. Oh, was a 20, huh? That's not good enough. Nice. Awesome. So now we're at 2.2. We could be higher, but that's okay. And then, yeah, that one would be really good to do. And then eventually we'll do the Army of Thieves, which would be pretty good. Disband the militias. Modernize the forces. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. I'll get some better planes. Oh my gosh, we're using stuff from World War II still. This guy. Yeah, there's, we can't stop this. We just gotta keep boosting the entire time, just because uh, these guys are gonna be difficult to beat. I mean, the guys are not terrible, but they're not great. And the, okay, so again, they are 32 combo with, which is not bad, but still. But still. Oh, actually, use up a little bit too much. No. No, no, no. Let's reset that. Not bad. Oof. Artillery. So we one, two, three, four. There we go. Now we're good. Nice. Not bad. And we need a little more army XP. I'd probably throw on tank recon. We don't even have tanks yet, but that's alright. Next step. Good, good, good. Followed up with keeping our minds bright. Get our hands dirty. I kind of wish there was more, like, societal development, but then again, I haven't looked at it all the way through here. Yeah. It can only do so much with these, so... And education for crime? Huh. Well, let's get our hands in the dirt. Hey, Russia's a nation of peasants. Th oh, urbanization has been a trend since the late 19th century. The largest of Russia's seas, like Moscow and Petrograd, now large lie largely in the hands of the German dudes, whom we cannot do anything about yet. However, we can focus on undoing that horrific Bolshevik program of collectivization, which punished farmers just for being enterprising and successful at their jobs, with countless millions carted away to the gulag to school out capitalists, while the rest were treated as cattle by the state, which shall allow us no longer. The farms too must be opened up to the market, and the Red pla Plague shall infect the fields no longer. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Let's see, how are we doing down here? That's not too bad. Of course, we wanted to get more development done as well, but it'll come. The Thieves' World. Izzy tapped the pen on the paper, lifting his eyes to the mayor of, of the town. Is that all? 
The young man nodded, scratching his cheek, a present tattoo on the top of his hand showing a smoking skull. Certainly is. The people need <clears throat> some education, not enough engineers for the electrical substation. Also, the food reserves could get a refill with that, what with the collective farms being an utter effing bust. The Great Pecan said, yeah, yeah, stop yapping, I'm thinking. It was certainly a poignant problem, but the people were not only split by their identities, but even by how they got their daily piece of bread. Omskovites <clears throat> and Kaganovich's clique worked by what was essentially a command economy. Zotel stood on a sheer capitalist economy, though its social net was barely existent. Rokosovsky was a military junta and worked completely by rationing. In the end, an army by itself was not very effective. But what was going to be their economy? Is the only certainly remember the greatest manifo manifostos of his time. Al Capone, Siegel, Delvenga, Delvenga, no, 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 Del, not Delvenga, Dillinger. All of them had tied the system around their finger. And which system was it? Israeli felt a grin spread on his lips. I think we should privatize. I mean, I work for the Americans. <laughs> yes. Uh, discredited opponents. So they're actually doing stuff now. But they shouldn't affect us too much. Give the, a cut to the farmers. I'll do that one. Oh, I don't like low minimum wage. Let's wait for that one. Keep our minds bright. Knowledge is power and power is something that the great pecan is always hungry for. The German invasion threw our country into anarchy and who suffered most of all? The little boys and girls who should have been growing up in school who are now forced to beg on the streets just to survive and left at the mercy of petty warlords. Sure, we might be warlords too, but we're warlords with principles. If the little ones are growing up illiterate and dumb, Russia will suffer compared to the international competition. And if we ever desire to become a world superpower, the next generation of Russians are going to have to be the best and brightest around. Nice. Here the Pakans. Awesome. So right now, 38. They're, uh, they're aligned. We're 38. We're going up by like 0.5 every day. They're going up by 0.9. Um, how much does it cost to do this? We'll do both. So 0.37. So they went up by 0.6. We, we go up by point, a little less than 6. So. We should get there. They're 27. I did, we did hurt ourselves quite a bit with this, but, yeah. We'll see. Because we need them. And I don't want to fight for them. Give a speech. Yeah, this is that one, too. I love all the political power, though. Let's go in every village. Where the urban areas like Chile have been, so to two men, there's already existing school systems for the children. Though the German bombings and our hostile takeover of the areas is damaged, it, our biggest priority has to be solving the fact that many kids in the rural villages can't even put two and two together. Using our taxes for development scheme, we can ensure that those villages we so generously squeeze every cent out of can rest assured that at the very least, the kids will get to school every day while their mommies and daddies tend to the farms. Furthermore, we can make sure that technical education becomes a reality for those students that don't want to pursue higher education so they can become top-notch farmers or industrial workers. Not bad. <clears throat> Uh, university in every city. Teaching the kids A, B, C's, and 1, 2, 3's is all good and all. It's good and all, but there's a difference between the third grade poetry recital and being a rocket scientist. Once these kids graduate school, they're going to need to make sure the brightest of them end up with the right tools to succeed in bringing us new technologies. And the good old Russian spirit of innovation, per the order of the great Pakan, proper universities will be constructed in every single urban district and the thief territory. And admissions committees will be set up to ensure that the best and brightest, or the richest for the matter, are able to become top-notch scientists, doctors, engineers, mathematicians, or whatever else those nerds like to study. What matters for us is that Russia can once again become a beacon of science and innovation. And innovation breeds profit. Lots of it. Low marks again. Sorry, Maria Stepanova. Real sorry, the young man dragged Dmitri through the doorway of a single-room apartment. Past the stone faced Maria. The middle-aged woman not even having time to take off her apron. They jumped us. I wasn't even sure if... <clears throat> Don't worry, Vasya. Uh, just go on. Your mother's also worried sick. The woman pronounced evenly. Helping Dmitri sit down, the 17-year-old grunting uncharacteristically for his age, as if he was an old man and everything hurt. Vasya would nod nervously, looking back at Dmitri. <laughs> I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Mimika? Go ho. Gotta go. Ha. He would slip out of the apartment as quickly as possible, leaving his comrade alone. Mario would unclip the young man's shirt, finding the sewing kit in the back of the kitchen and finding the knife injury on his stomach. Lord, blood in a hole? You really made a mess of the shirt, Maitinka. Uh, her stone-cold tone would warm slightly, but her voice began to shake. Dimitri grunted, something acknowledging his cap having slid down to his eyes as he put on or put his weight against the table, being hard to even sit down. Beginning to sew the wound shut, Maria Stepanova would look at the rest of the scars that littered her son's chest and arms, the same ones that she also had clothes. Lord, Mitya, this cannot continue. Mm -hmm. The other responded weakly. Do you not think? Do you think that burying it on man and the family is not enough? Want to make me have to bury my son as well? No, Ma. Lord, I do not even know what to do with you anymore. You wander through about with those boys. You make a mess. Why can you not be like your sister? Do you not want to me to bring? Do you want to bring me to an early grave, Mitya? No, Ma, no. All you know is fight, fight, and fight, and all we have to do is clean it up and bear it. When will you grow up? Mari would throw the sewing kit down, having sewn his uh, wound shut, and sit down, pulling her face into her hands. Dimitri opened his mouth, only one weak excuse flowing out. Sorry, Ma. <laughs> Gotta go beat up some neighbor boys. 
So we get to a, no influence. We should be able to just end it there, right? That, that, that would make sense to me, maybe. Maybe just me. Maybe. Urbanizer Holdings. Washington, Tokyo, Germania, Rome. When people think of the great powers of this world, the first thing that comes to the mind is the sprawling centers of political and economic power they possess. A pro proper power ought to have great cities teeming with com commerce and culture. A testament to the strength of the people and leadership. The Thieves Sector has a few large cities, but they are dwarfed by those larger oh, and other nation nations in both population and financial power. We will encourage investment and settlements in our industrial cities like Tumen and Surgut through incentives like reduced taxes and offers of stimulus packages to prospective capitalists. Furthermore, we'll start to build new factories and mining towns. So, Urban settlements can start can grow to start to grow naturally within our lands without constant government intervention. Perhaps we'll even get a few brave tourists. There we go. So here we have here increase relations, increase relations. Yes, please. Point eight. Man, they go. Why does the AI get higher influence? That doesn't make any sense. Obviously, they're not like high relations right now, but still, I don't like that. Let the money flow. Um, honestly, it doesn't seem like it's... That, obviously, that one's better. I don't want to lose that one. Long run home. Consolidated power. Uh, let's go do the, the army of the thieves. Though we might be shooting in the fields of business, both legal and that more of the uh, <clears throat> criminal natures. The army of the thief territory is not much more than a ragtag militia. Only through shoot tactics and trickery was our ill-equipped force able to unify our little corner of Russia. However, we may not be so lucky in the future. Our prospective enemies to our west and east possess professional militaries and a burgeoning military industry. If we do not modernize our own forces into something that is worthy of being a true army, we'll surely be crushed and our way of life may be lost forever. But a great Pakan will not let this injustice stand. Our enemies shall grow their forces by the day, and so shall we. New soldiers shall be found and trained, new officers commissioned no matter the price, and we shall acquire modern tanks, planes, and weaponry to fuel our conquest by enemies necessary. We thieves are at our heart, those men that refuse to die in this cold and hateful world. Now we shall show it to who its true masters are. Let none oppose us. And then modernize the forces. Probably. Oh, that's pretty good to get. Yeah, let's go that one. Modernize the forces. Through discipline and training remain a serious issue for our forces. It'll matter little how good our individual warriors are trained, if they do not have the arms and leadership to make them into real soldiers. Though in theory, our men should all be armed with Kalashnikov rifles protected by the T-55 tanks and BTR troop carriers, and have the skies above rocked by jet fighters. The troop paints a much less flattering picture. Many of our rear echelon units still use mosin gun rifles from the war. Many lack ammo even for those if they are lucky enough to have a weapon. Our armored units and air force are, to put it mildly, non-existent. We can expect to win a war if this sorry state of affairs continues any longer. All paths grow thorns. This is Jan Pace's office. Elo read off the list. Two food trucks, several tons of small arms ammo, a seized ammo depot. Enough, the Kurd stopped in his tracks, turning on his heels, staring down at his right-hand man. Well, Elo corrected his side nervously, blinking a couple times. Well, what, sir? What did that all for respond to our demands? Usuyan rounded his desk, sitting down and interlocking his fingers. When will they stop? Uh, Elo opened and crumpled the, the crumpled note clipped to the noteboard, clearing his throat. I quote, let the boys have some fun, a new missing, few missing bullets is no harm done. Man is utter madness, the Kurt interrupted his assistant, saying again, measuring the room with the steps. That is not a lack of discipline. What does that brute take me for? Elo waited for a minute or a pause in a tirade. You are certainly correct. The destruction of assets in such a massive way is unlikely to be. I know, Elo, I know. No need to repeat my thoughts, Usuyan rubbed his temples. This must end. Put all drivers on the smuggling routes off the main roads. No more emergency aid. I want you to crush this, this suck up skulls. Starve them of everything. The export will make up for it. The animal will pay for his deaths threefold. Assessing our potential. Bogtov marched in front of the row of soldiers, observing the new forms of armed forces he would command. Some so straight. He could recognize the department, uh, department of his own officers, or the forces of Kakanovich, some like the Omskovites, didn't even seem to breathe. There was even the more relaxed ones, Dragunov's boys. The last ones were, of course, the bandits, none of them have uniforms, men exchanging jokes as Bogtov passed them. <clears throat> the general turned on his heels, observing the line of mixed and matched soldiers, Kurotov through the Kalm Kalmikin, redo basic training. <clears throat> The line of bandits went silent, shocked. All the bandit forces are to redo basic training, including discipline training and uniform rules. The general looked at the rest and shouted, To the right. The right. The line turned 90 degrees, even the shocked bandits following orders. Forward march. The soldiers marched away towards the barracks, leaving Izzyliani, who now sat lazily on the sidelines, observing the general and Batov alone on the field. Izzyliani broke the silence. What the F was that? I thought we were working together, you dustbag. Batov was not at all shifted by the change in tone. The territory's forces are not ready for combat. They lack discipline and they cannot follow orders efficiently. That is the base of the army. Look, old boy, Izzyliani sat forward. It was clear that he was barely containing his anger. Each gang has the right to express their way in combat. Y you don't. Batov chuckled. Well, they keep trying to undermine overall order. It won't matter how unique they are. They're dead in a ditch. When the sun goes down, we're all like everyone else. Also, apparently... The AI has, an, I think, an increased amount of gain uh, over the EuroLeague and Orenburg, so we're back down to neutral, and now they're aligned. So, at this point, we're just going to go to war. I, I, there's no point doing that unless it's super early, and I'm a little more confident with it, just because even though they have a lot of divisions, quite a few divisions, um, they do have some militia too, but they have no manpower. So, if we move fast enough, we might do okay here. 
I'm cutting you off. What do you mean he refused? Isliani sat up, his expression changing from the usual self-assuredness to a terrifying grimace. <clears throat> Raphael unconsciously took a step back, uh, a step back at that look, forcing the words out of himself. He, he said there was not enough ammo in the depots, and even if he got a new batch, it would take too long to transport. The great Pakan smashed his fist down on the table. B.S. He lied. Raphael cannot disagree completely, but he cannot let Isliani just storm out and do something over overtly violent. Our borders did expand, sir. F your borders, Raph. We never had problems with garnering uh, an emergency equipment and ammo when our boys were on the back foot on a raid, and now suddenly that darn Kurt is giving us a radio silence and then no apology? Am I supposed to effing swallow that? Izzy Liani sat down again, fuming, putting his thumbnail between his uh, thief as he considered something. Sir, Raphael calmed a little uh, at the silence, but seeing Izzy Liani's state was disturbing. I want that dude to drown in paperwork, pardon? The great Pakan lifted his eyes, his voice threateningly low. Drown that dude, paperwork, security checks, boredom, and vandalism of the patrolling soldiers. I don't care, make his company choke on the, uh, the th thief territories. Give prime passage for supply trucks. Suffocate the darn parasite, which, honestly, we didn't need it all, but whatever. Yeah, investment's high, we couldn't get anything, so yeah. Uh, I already did the assassinate one, but nothing came of it, so. Very weird. Very, very weird. And aid from General Batov. General Bata was once an enemy to us, a leading commander of the Third Army to our south, and widely reported to be the Marshal Rokosovsky's successor. Those Fedlovs ultimately fell in our hands. Bata's forces were some of the few that didn't accept our bribes and fought to the bitter end. Since then, he has proven invaluable in organizing a new army. Though he has little love for the thieves, if Bata wishes us of Russia, then we will give them everything he needs to that end. Does that include tanks of our own? Hopefully. More units. That's uh, not bad. Two men military academy? Yes. <clears throat> wow. Daily command power increase? Good. No army can fight and expect to win unless it's properly led. Though we're already putting effort into the training of our soldiers into a proper fighting force, there will be nothing but cannon fodder without officers training modern concepts of war. And the city of two men, a former home of the Stalinists. Stalinist lackeys have made quite the impressive military academy to train its new Red Army. Though, since it's fallen into disrepair, we could easily reopen and train a new generation of officers fit to lead our army to many glorious victories to come. Highway robbery. With the interlocking cape mechanisms and the struggles of the thief state, the resistance between the great Pakan Izliani and Altslan Usulyan have exploded. A recent caravan of Usulyan supply runners has disappeared for a few days. Upon mounting a search, the trucks and the bodies of the drivers were found, or rather, whatever remained of them. From the official investigation, it is known that the caravan had been attacked mid drive. All the drivers that survived the initial attack were executed by bayonets, and the truck, uh, trucks were to have been found to have been emptied before the attackers got away. The event has caused an uproar within the circle, many accusing Izliani's forces of lack of oversight over his men, and some even accusing the great Pakan of giving a direct order for the Assault, while many others blame Usulyan for a possible false flag operation, considering the light load of the truck compared to the usual transports or a possible assault on the thieves' army, as many drivers were found to be armed. None, no one is innocent, even everyone is guilty. Oh, we can do another assassination, huh? And we do get army XP from that, which is not too bad. I do like that quite a bit. Aid from Batov. Still looking pretty good here. Still building up more civvy, civvy, civvies for GDP and stuff. Uh, I'll be honest here. I'm not entirely sure if we can uh, do uh, the second West Russian War mod in this. I don't know if it's available so we can use it so we can go to war with Russia. Or not Russia. Germans after we unify Russia. So we'll see. Does serve a new master? Pavel Bata was confused exactly why Usulyan had requested his presence. The violent struggle for power between Usulyan and Izliani had infected the army too badly, but a few of its confidents, known loyalists of Jabba, had been found all dead recently. The chauffeur opened the car door, giving way for any few stern looking guards to escort the general to Usulyan's study. Surprisingly, the mansion wasn't quite as lavishly decorated as he would have thought. In fact, the whole thing seemed very cold and utilitarian. The door opened, and Papa Hassan himself, as he was known by his friends, shook his hand. Come in, General Bata. There's much to talk about, so much business to be done, but first tea? I would not mind it. The guard standing by his side left the room for two cups of tea while the courier went straight to business. General, your previous aid in running our training, or training your forces has not gone to notice. Your aid has been indispensable in ensuring the soldiers under our command can neutralize any threat to our rule and turn our from others who claim the mantle of the Russian nation. Batov cringed, knowing very well what exactly neutralization meant. However, I know that you are close with the great Pakan, of course, of ours. Jabba Izliani, a man I have certain issues with that I would like to resolve soon. Many of his closest associates have been, well, I'd be very honest, were assassinated on my orders. But you, Batov, are a lucky man. When I at last unseat the un Georgian fool, I'll make sure that your position stays intact. I need men like you by my side if we were to have any chance of reclaiming all of Russia and beyond. What exactly are you offering me? Anything you want, Pasha. Money, power, women. I can arrange you to have a residence twice as opulent as mine. I will pin countless medals upon your chest, and you can lead the charge for my vision of Russia. So brutally efficient that no one will ever be able to compare to it from Germania. Uh, from Germania to New York, what do you say? 
I cannot be corrupted so easily, Bakan. My wish is to serve Russia, not to enslave it. I must reject your offer, unfortunately. If it is your desire to help you kill Mr. Izzyani, that I've been charged to arrange, and I have no wish to exploit the people of Russia any further than the current powers that have been forced me to. The guard came back with two cups of hot tea, but Batab had already left the room, a frown of disappointment and sorrow on his face. Some things cannot be bought, no matter the price. And we bought a month off for that. It's not bad. City of strategies. Ah, uh, send the scientists to work. Innovate, innovate, innovate. Innovate or die. Any good businessman knows this. Those that stay stuck in the past, st sticking desperately to the outdated, will ultimately be driven to extinction by those who forge the future. Though many decry us as, as exploiters of the coming people, we can also appreciate the value of patronizing the sciences. We'll make sure that those with education in the fields of science and engineering do not go unemployed, and provide them with the funds that they need to make their dreams reality. After all, this success is our profits, and if they can happen to be working on something that can kill people, then their success is our victory. Strive for better. And so in the pencil motion one can, Batov moved his finger on the map, the newly minted general staring at him with undivided attention from Petron's sleazy, kleptomaniac eyes to Am Avmarov's melancholic gaze. None of, the, none of the officers even had a formal education, some of them barely knew how to read. However, Batov did see a lot of potential and some enough to take in as protégés after the general troop reform had begun. Kirill Korobaka Korobaka May have been a smuggler, however, if there was anyone who understood the struggles of the supply question. It was him when running through theory, the man had the utmost understanding of where to utilize firepower and where to preserve the infrastructure, glistening with his golden teeth as he grinned slightly greedily. Avmarov, for his reputation as a constant escape, he had a good consideration for terrain, especially on the defense and the retreat, his home turf being the forest. Well, we'll get the boys to the tree lines, and Avos will carry us through, sire. He tended to pronounce many any time a tactical situation discussion was brought up, seemingly not completely realizing that not everyone was well acclimated to the natural barriers of the motherland. Petron, on the other hand, had a great understanding for attack. The man's grabby hand tightened into fists excitedly every time tanks or artillery brought up. Considering the man's reputation as a robber and a small arms enthusiast, it did make sense. There we are for the day. The lecture is over. Return to your barracks. Bob top rolled the map clothes, watching the X-Bandits salute and begin to march out. He noticed something inside. Maybe calling them X-Bandits was still a bit too early. Petron, the thief stopped at his name being called, turning his heel, clearly guilty. Return my wristwatch, and please keep this many of yours under control next time. Batov lectured exhaustedly. The watch clocked as it was placed on the desk, and the thief slipped out of the room nervously. Can it, can beat a general into a thief, but not a thief out of a general. Setting strategy. The thieves at law are at the root, an organization of criminals. No criminal can even claim the title a thief unless he has served multiple prison stints. However much tradition may be important to us, we'll still need to break from our roots in some ways if we wish to survive. A circle and the thieves organization as a whole must not be led by uneducated thugs who know not who only know how to use their fists. Though it's great that our subjects fear us, our enemies will not fear a nation led by illiterate criminals. Those thieves cannot even bother to learn how to read or write properly, can have their territory adjusted to something more manageable for the feeble minded. 16 is not bad. Do we have anything else here? Uh, 200 out of 200. No, we do have, we do have some casts. That's not bad. It's not bad. Hopefully some Marta's not going to war with us, but they probably honestly will. So we just have to be ready for that and make sure we got enough good stuff here too. The theorized new industrial methods. Many centuries ago, a man in China named Sun Tzu wrote a book known as The Art of War. It's required reading in many military academies around the world, and most recently was added to the curriculum of our own military schools. War, however, is not only an art, it's a science. Like any science, war can be perfected. It can be methodical. We can learn from what doesn't work and ex further explore what does. Every aspect of a war machine must be experimented on and brought down to science. Who said that thieves were stupid men? They're violent, stupid men. But they're our men. Two men. No, not two men. Our men. So far, looking pretty good. We lost 300 versus 4,000. Oh, yeah. Keep keep going. Another assassination? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, go right there. Magnitogorsk. That should be much better. Much, much better. There we go. Uh, do you have any upgrades? Scavenger is nice to have, too. Jabba... Oh, he's a logistics wizard. Nice. It's a fast planner, which is, eh, it's okay. I would prefer the other one, but whatever. Good. Studying strategy. Theorize. Yes, yes. Some theory is always good to have. He's definitely getting a lot more experience, which is something we desperately want. Our soldiers. We should be able to get these guys done, though. I'm not too worried about this, especially right here. Uh, hop out right here, too. Take, take Bellatorsk. 
and adapting to survival. Uh, we can wait for that one. Let's go ahead and do disband the militias. The first step in our modernization program must be the formal abolishment and disbanding of many militias we recruited in our earlier campaigns against similar forces. They were barely a match, but now that their enemies are no longer mere warlords, the bandits must professionalize into something resembling a real army. There can be no excuse for ill-discipline, patch equipment, and non-standard uniforms anymore. Nice. And that should capitulate them. There you go. Nice. Good stuff. Hey, are you encircled, son? Ah, that destiny is death. And we shall guarantee it. No matter how many men it costs us, we must do it like this. Yes, I agree. Yes, 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 yes. Well, 6,000 gets those guys is not bad. Not terrible. And now they have up to 8 divisions left. Oh, never mind. They have up to 7 divisions max. Maybe. 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 Give a speech. And yeah, we can wait. Uh, expanding territorial recruitment. The national conscription reform. I wanted... Ooh. Actually, I don't want to do this one. Which, I, we'll probably do this one next when we play as Uso Yan, but... Uh, expand territorial recruitment. Our system of governance largely relies on political pecans governing our territory for us. A pecan within his borders. It's responsible for the thieves below and any associates that work with the mafia. Furthermore, it is his right to offer protection, pass laws, levy taxes, and conscript troops for the national army under his command. Though the system is prone to corruption, given that we are criminals, it also works. So long as the local pecans keep paying the dues and tax taxes and troops for the great pecan, we'll not have to deal with any unfortunate shortages in recruitment targets when the time comes for war. Nice. There you go. So now we have one heck of a really extended board here, which kind of does suck, so let's do that. Oh, they've all negative demilitarized, huh? Sucks to be you. There we go. Room for growth. Another general. Anatoly Chekhasov. Good again. Batov, yeah, get Batov here. Nice. Awesome. Training we need to as well. Got to be ready for whatever, <clears throat> and have some coffee. Ah, militias. Uh, advanced training methods. Germany, Japan, America. The three great superpowers of the world divide in ideology, holdings, and objectives, and threaten the world with a nuclear sword of Damocles. But what do they have in common? Professional armies, trained to fight and die in moments known for freedom, fear, or for emperor. Our troops are not so quite fanatic, at least not in the ways we would want them to. And they're certainly not disciplined or trained to fight like soldiers in any sense of that word. Per the Great Pecan's orders, regional training camps will be set up around the country to train new recruits, indoctrinating them with the necessary discipline, skills, and physical mental fitness to fight like real warriors. Furthermore, current troops will be constantly retrained and drilled to stay in the top shape, and will send our officers for education from the best advisors money can buy on the tactics and strategies of modern warfare. Cool. Teach them strength. Ooh. Speed. Finance artillery. Ooh. F form the Spetsnaz. That's kind of cool, too. Ooh, a little bit of lag there, huh? Uh, teach them strength. The best trait a soldier can have is physical fitness. Even if the enemy is better armed and their soldiers better led, we will drill and train our men so that one of ours is worth a hundred of the enemy's. Harsh physical training reg regimens involving regular cardiovascular exercise and strength training will put our boys in tip top shape, ready to march for miles and fight like demons straight from heck. We'll show them who's the boss of Russia. 20 divisions, not bad. Not great, but not too bad. Thank you. And the, the finest artillery. <clears throat> Napoleon Bowen part one said that God favors the side with the best artillery. Napoleon eventually lost to none other than Mother Russia, but he still managed to win against all of Europe for nearly 15 years since Napoleon's time, however. Artillery has gotten just a little more advanced than the smoothbore. Muzzle loaded cannons. Since some Soviet theorists believe that the use of mass artillery strikes combined with rapid shock assaults could have disorganized German forces pushing into Russia, of course. Bukharin's incompetency meant that they never got the chance to prove their hypothesis. Now we will, and turn our enemies into a fine pink mist in the process. Fear and loathing in LA. Cool. Political thought? Sure, why not? You can have some slight political thought there. Hey, you get some manpower back. Awesome. Um. Oh, wow. We were really maxing out on that cast. Nice. Grab some of that. We're going to need way more artillery, though. A few more guns. Eventually. Cool. Ready for war. 
The army of the thieves have come a long way from a band of clique formed of common criminals and hastily conscripted peasants. Gone are the days when we hid in fear of blokens, thugs or cowered at the thought of facing the fanatics of Marshal Yazov. They're all dead, but we've risen from their ashes and feasted upon their demise. Whoever looks upon our steely ranks now will have no doubt it'll be us to reclaim the mantle of Russia and bring on and glory to the motherland whose soldiers once marched from Paris to Alaska. Ah, poor old Africa, but no one cares. Cool. And we got to prepare for war in 69, right? Oh, morning tragedy extract from Uttara Gazette. While investigation into the incident is still ongoing, several gunmen have been wounded during the attack on Legible. Square. Several dozen bystanders were caught in the fire of the terrorists, including women and children. The city has been put under lockdown. The editorial condolences go out to the families of the victims. Nothing is sacred. Oh, boy. Happy 68th, everybody. Happy 68th. Um, entering the global theater. The Thief Territory is no longer just a warlord state. We're not mere bandits. The Thief Territory is a nation. That is an indisputable fact. We have clearly defined borders and army, stable government under the wise leadership of a great Pakan. Izzyliani has insisted that with our ambitions stretching across the Russian state, we must reach out to the world, especially the democracies of OFM. By promising some nominal reforms, we could gain access to investments from the powerful American economy and advisors from their government and armed forces to aid in our modernization. Also, Yan, however, has a different opinion. The spider holds that we shouldn't put all of our eggs in one basket and instead catch as many new friends as we can in his web. After all, more investments means more profit, does it not? Yes. Awesome, awesome. Neutral as a Swiss. Neutral as a Swiss. Great Pecan's friends in America. Meeting Madrid. Opening, huh. Profitable partnership. Um, as much as I want to do this side. What is, does what does Aslan make the Great Pecan have to be? A fool? Neutral as a Swiss. Um nominal reforms. Honestly, I think oof. yeah, Aslan, Az Usuyan wants to go as many people as possible, so that's his route. I think for us, we're going to go with this, with the Great Pakans in America. What does Aslan make the Great Pakan out to be? A fool? If we were to follow the spider's advice, we would give Usuyan a free hand to take over the reins of the state while Jabba's too busy making dealings with irrelevant leaders. Instead, Izzyliani has proposed that we make use of his connections with certain business figures in America to get in line to the government. The OFM will be more than happy to support a resurgent Russia in the fight against Nazi menace, while our respect for the ideals of capitalism and the right to wealth will certainly sit well with the capitalist class, ready to invest in a rapidly liberalizing and expanding national economy. More land added attack is super, super good right now. Uh, make sure we build more civvies too. You know what? We'll build two millies too, because we can. But then keep going this way. Nice. Hey, some of the roads are maxed out already. That's actually really nice. There you go. Promises of freedom. Though so far the American government has responded quite amicably to requests for humanitarian aid and economic development, the politicians, ever insistent on spreading their ideas of freedom, liberalism, and democracy, have placed a caveat on any further aid to our state. They claim that our leadership is unnecessarily authoritarian and corrupt, given that what we have established order within West Siberia and that the thief territory must take efforts to democratize and give non mafia members input from the government or in the government. Furthermore, they have outrageously demanded that we, an organization composed of criminals, take serious efforts to reduce crime and corruption within the country. Though there are no plans to oblige these demands in any serious manner, organizing some local elections and putting a limit on a more brutal side as a necessary evil if we push or wish to be recognized as a legitimate state by the free world. Approaching the eagle. Izzyliani <clears throat> leaned back in his chair, eyeing the two agents sitting across from him, as well as a huge mirror window on the wall. Ma, ma this certainly felt quite familiar. No, so no. The press conferences and smiling at the camera, the great Pecan pronounced dryly, picking his teeth through the nail. Even through their shades, Izzyliani noticed the glances of the two agents threw at each other. While the U.S. are open to negotiations supporting your efforts, Mr. Izzyliani, you cannot pardon, oh, you're not compared to a criminal, hmm? Izzyliani interrupted. The agent opened his mouth, closed, and then opened it again. Yes. An unpleasant silence filled the room. Izzyliani chuckled. Funny from a nation whose founding was tax evasion. But otherwise, what can you give me? Have you received the list I sent you? Some of the tensions subsided as the other agent smiled. We have looked through your demands and found none of them to be unreasonable. Actually, upon looking over your uh, situation, we found that your resolve in allowing free markets and competition warrants additional support. A slip of paper with lines upon lines of equipment was slipped across the table, the great pecan catching it and giving it a glance. Izzyliani stood up before smiling, and so we're doing this on the hush, huh? Agents also stood up? Certainly. 
and about American corporations. Sure, humanitarian aid is great, but what the great Pakan really wanted from America wasn't the honeyed words of their politicians, nor the thoughts and prayers of the American people. Those meant nothing to them. Ford? General Motors? General Electric? Valero? Those do. What Washington can't provide us, Wall Street certainly can. With the aid of our new business partners in America, American consumers will soon drive their cars on Russian fuel, purchase Russian-made consumer goods, and get new electronics made with Russian rare metals in return. Their form of investment will gain our assistance new opportunities for employment, meaning a large boon in taxable income for our state, and as a large bonus to extensive profits, will already rake in from all these new trade deals. Awesome. Money, 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 my friends. What makes the world go round? Money, which I don't have enough of. And I'm sure you don't have enough of either, probably, if you're watching this channel. <laughs> Invite the CIA to the war room. Officially, American support has been purely off of humanitarian nature, providing our people's food, infrastructure, and healthcare after so many years of Bolshevik mismanagement and German terror bombings. The CIA, America's feared spy agency, has less need to obey political convention. Recently, certain agents have made contact with the senior military members within the circle, offering tacit support and providing modern weapons and training for our officers and men. Though the presence of foreign agents comes with a security risk, we can assume that Americans have a vested interest in strengthening our armed forces, as the United Russia would put Germany into a panic not seen since the German Civil War. Unfortunately, we can also assume that the same support is going to our potential enemies. Best not to look uh, a gift horse in the mouth, especially one that can kill you over in 700 ways, and that's just with his bare hands. Keep building, 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 building. A profitable partnership. What can you say about our new friends in America? The great Pakan scheme is paid handsomely now as American corporations generously invest into the thief-owned businesses, and we're getting all richer for it. Though, through our political context with America, we've even started opening up trade with other OFN nations. Notably, we've started to uh, make new partnerships with Canadian and Australian companies, knitting us new partners in the Pacific Ocean. The Army greatly appreciates the covert aid of the CIA, and they're even in the process of setting up a spy agency of our own. Even the people have much to be happy about, though they might, not be paying, they might be paying up to their neck in taxes. Those with the right connections are now enjoying all sorts of Western goodies, from cars to coffee. Let's hope that this lucrative uh, relationship comes to benefit both our states for many more years to come. A helping hand. Oh yes, please help us out. Agent Conrad's side is the observer of the thief militia that was put under responsibility to be trained. While the CIA had arranged to send arms, they also got the bright idea to send actual military personnel to train these thieves. Not a single one of them responded to names. Many had utterly ignored them under their pakan had brought something in Russian. All of them suddenly straightened out and became at least partially workable. But this, this took the cake. Yesterday, they were ordered to pick up their equipment, some unbranded military kits, and now. Why? Conrad rubbed his forehead while the Pakan relayed his message. Some of the soldiers stood with extra guns, while some held their night vision goggles like blunt weapons, clearly having exchanged them for extra pieces of whatever they wanted. There were a large unit that was Cochrane, also known by Alligator, where it exchanged his kit parts for MREs, slowly stuffing another packet of shredded beef down his gobble, chewing lazily as it looked off into the distance with barely any attention. Then there was an anemic Volvo, his gear lacking in grenades but in surplus of three coats on his shoulders, staring back with an innocent look in his eyes. Conrad's eyes stopped on Pe Pedro Petrin and asked him directly, Why Petrin? The thief smiled from under the monopolized mountain of helmets, his golden teeth reflected amiably. Free market for these. For this, Capitan. Free market for these. Hmm. Funny. We have a lot of armies being on. Holy crap. Adapting to survival. But we might march on into the future and arm ourselves with the newest war machines. It'll all be for nothing if we forget our origins. We were once mere bandits, those that few that survived the terrible years under Blokin's whip and the icy heck that was Varkuta. We were all once prisoners. All thieves are by definition, or else he was not a real thief. We fought and earned every scrap of food, every kopep. Every day we were still alive in that terrible place. We fought for the right to survive and for the right to rule. Now that we are masters of this land, we must not grow complacent now. We must adapt constantly to the threats around us or we will all die. Nice. Assassination? We love assassinating here. Uh, tanks of our own. The last five decades of conflict, from the Great War to the Russian Anarchy, have shown us the necessity of superior armor in any serious conflict. Our connections in other Russian states have sent us back blueprints and reports of new tank forces being de developed and deployed by our force potential adversaries to fight and to unify Russia. This threat to the thieves cannot stand. We will ensure extensive financial rewards for military engineers to get modern tank designs into production and with the speed armor and armament to turn whatever tanks the enemy throws at us into scrap metal. Yes. A mechanized army. Though armored tactics can punch deep into enemy lines and cause a great deal of chaos and destruction, recent armored exercises have shown that our tanks are still very vulnerable to enemy infantry, if unescorted by ground forces of our own. Though getting our foot soldiers mechanized will be a great logistical challenge, the fruits of our efforts shall be more than worth it. Rather than marching long distances, our men will certainly re enjoy resting their legs in the back of a truck, and elite mechanized forces transported by APCs and IFVs will be more than capable of supporting our tankers in battle. At least that's the hope, right? Speaking of tanks, let's not produce any garbage tanks. Cool. That's not too bad. 9.1 is actually pretty darn good from where we started at, so. Yeah, this is lasting just, lasting just a little bit too long, in my opinion. But maybe that's just me. Stealing in the skies. Though we have a strong land force is key. 
though having a strong land force is key to any military engagement. Modern warfare also requires supremacy in the skies, though we certainly do possess an air force. It's not one much worth riding home about. Large consisting of great patriotic war air propeller planes and Soviet IL-2 bombers, these museum pieces have little use in today's battlefields. Recent developments in jet engines have proven fruitful. It is time we trade out our message Schmidt's father for new pilots and new planes, worthy of our supersonic age. The skies will be ours for the taking. A stiff drink. I, I had been a long time since Roman had been able to keep his bar open for more than a few hours before some punks ruined his pub. Not, mo not that he could complain. He got enough business to cover his expenses with a little on the side to keep for himself, though he felt like he had something forgotten. He had forgotten something, but what? Say that crap again, a-hole. A disgruntled patron yelled to another. Roman reached for uh, uh, his revolver, though once he grabbed it, he remembered what he had forgotten. Bullets. He had only one bullet to use, and he had to make it count. He decided to put it back in the small crevice behind the counter. What the F did you just say? Another patron yelled in response before they threw their drink at the guy, though they missed and hit another patron. Just another one of those nights, Roman shook his head as he wiped down the counter, letting the situation escalate as all the patrons started to brawl. Looking up from the counter, the barman raised his voice. All of you sit down, predictably, of course. No one listened. Once more, he reached under the counter and grabbed his revolver. He cocked it, pointed to the crowd, and pointed one closed eye while nearing the other as he slightly focused, slowly focused on the first patron. Roman smiled as uh, he... as the patron sat back down. Thank God he didn't have to risk waving around an unloaded gun. Thank you. One last call for alcohol. We'll see receipts for investments. Uh, these last days, our spies detected an influx of anonymous... Uh, or really more anonymous, investments from foreign businessmen into the thief subsidiaries. After some digging, we managed to track down some s sorts of liquidity. The capitals passed the facade companies whose owners were only named bearers. Upon further investigation and convincing of the company holders, we discovered that most of these shell tracks back to Usoyam. Wherever that funding is, goes is not certain, but it doesn't look like it's beneficial to the state apparatus. Sir, this is proof that our economic laws are flawed. These evident loopholes can be used by enemies of the state to smuggle in funds from outside our country or territory. We could make use for some regulations. Sign your friend and Aslan Usyan Secretary as a writing Leonid Rojov. Rojov. Raise the security. Foreign investments are to be double checked. There you go. And he's been dealt with. Nice. Steal the skies. An investment in helicopters. Supersonic fighters and bombers are certainly a great addition to our armed forces, but the modern age has brought with a new kind of aircraft. The helicopter. Though much slower than fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters have many advantages. They can fly low to the ground, harbor in place, are easier to operate, and most importantly, can give and take a lot of punishment. It would be keen to invest in not only transport helicopters, but which can quickly transport supplies to the front and wound and the wounded from danger, but all attack helicopters as well. Capable of taking up both infantry and tanks alike with a variety of bombs, rockets, and machine guns, very little will be able to survive a barrage from our new toys. New toys and boys. 5.6, not bad. And I, I, I'm waiting to build up all this indus industry stuff here just because, you know, we have that one that limits our amount we can build uh, factories in. Nothing but the best. At last, our investments into research and procurement of new weapons or equipment have proven a profitable indeed. The Great Pekan can rest easy knowing that the thieves' armies of finance in Russia. One of our troops is easily worth ten of any pathetic conscript, and the enemy throws at us. They ride into battle in cutting edge tank designs to rival even the Le Leopard and Clark. Easily cutting through the tin cans, our rivals can barely afford to keep running. The skies scream with the sound of our fighters cutting through the air, while helicopters bring death from above. While we may not have the biggest army around, we can say with pride that we have nothing but the best in our ranks. To victory and profit, we march on. Keep boosting up for now. No assassinations yet? Oh, Don. That sucks. We have a lot of cast. I hope we use it very, very effectively, though. Okay, never mind. We don't have a lot of cast. We have no manpower. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> And then give a cut to the farmers. Farming in West Siberia is no easy task. The growing months are short, winter's long, and food is hard to come by for many people here. Though the thieves aren't exactly interested in charity, we can only tax people so much that they have nothing to, uh, uh, to us to give to us but starving masses, I guess. Using what taxes we have collected already, and the profits coming in from our other ventures, we should begin an ambitious program of farming subsidies to ensure that the peasants can afford modern farming equipment, proper homes, and fields full of grain. The days of empty shelves shall be a thing of the past. Oh, minimum wage. Oh, terrible. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. There you go. Not bad. And once we're 69, we'll go to war with those guys in a deeper consideration. And so I shall tell him, Gah-ha! Isoliana smashed his glass down on the table, bursting into a drunken roar-like laughter. Balatov gave a polite chuckle, uh, but kept his glass of whiskey away from his lips, instead crossing his arms and sloshing the liquid with low motions, slow motions of his wrist. The warm light of the old light bulbs poured across the room of the general's quarters. For once, Great Pakan had decided to visit instead of calling the general to his office. The two men's drinking parties mostly devolving into Batov's politely listening to Isliani's roaring epics, fictional or not. 
<laughs> so that's why I don't trust no equipment past his due date, huh? Ezzelani wiped his eyes from the laughter, laughter tears and sipped a bit more from his glass. Curious, Bogdov pronounced absentmindedly, his gaze focused um, uh, on the window. Ezzelani lifted his gaze, his mood swinging drunkenly. What? Don't like my story? No, no, no. A rather curious thing. I was just thinking back to something. Well, spill it, darn solid of fun. I ain't the KGB. Bogdov shrugged off the insult. I had recently decided to create a scout corps. I've experienced it myself. And they can be useful. Of course, I need young men for the job. Putting veterans as scouts can be harmful. Ooh, get on with it. Something struck me about those recruits when I was recruited as a scout for the Lib Guard back in 1915. They have been in the same exact sorry state. Boys who could nearly read or write have been broken teeth and sons of malnutrition. And sometimes I do wonder about that pause. Well... Is Leonie's questioning got on the general's nerves? I do wonder if, if, for all I know, I'm just installing another tsar into place. Another silence. Is Leonie's expression turned grim as he sat back in the wooden chair and rubbed his face thoughtfully. Well, I just ain't the best man out there, but I ain't no tsar. He smirked. Just because we're going to make the pakans rule the country doesn't mean we're not going to be accountable to someone. Yeah, yeah. Ain't going to be a pakan who doesn't serve the people. Baltov chuckled at the newly found drunken enthusiasm before cutting off, th looking off thoughtfully. Is it the alcohol or the, is it a conscience? It's the alcohol. Between a rock and a hard place, the great pecan put the cigarette out on the table, forcing an annoyed look from Batov. Careful, these maps can go up from the flames at a second's notice. The general's hand carefully pushed the huge rolls to the side, farther from the black spot on the surface. As the Yanni snorted and took a few more gulps from his bottle. Enough of the semantics. What do we have? Batov sighed, unfurling the map. Two fronts, west and east. Up to now, neither has agreed to a diplomatic dialogue yet, at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The great Pecan grumbled, scratching his chin in the West. We have the most industry of the past union. The big cities, huge factories, and more infrastructure. Though fighting them will probably hurt like a crap or a dog. Considering that was once the best uh, of most fractured regions, and it faced Finland off, they probably have much more experience. And the East, Isleon interrupted his eyes thoughtfully. Batov straight the eastern frontier of their holdings, deeper into Siberia, less infrastructure, but the whole region has benefited a great deal from the remains of Bukharin's so called Siberian plan. I do not know much of it as we can how much of it we can seize, but with the dare train and the lesser numbers of big cities, it can be challenging. The general stopped looking over the great Pakam. So, where should we focus the forces? Isleon is snapped out of his thoughts before yawning. So, the West got the, most of the industry, that means most of the financial. Financial remains are there as well. Bata blinked, I suppose. Ezzelian uh, smiled knowingly. Then what are we waiting for? Onward and riches. Recolocalization. One of the great tragedies of the old union was the great atrocities committed by those farmers that knew how to run their farms right. They were those kulaks their land was seized and collectivized, and the farmers themselves were carted off to camps for the crime of being good at their job. The process, this process, if Russia is to be a prosperous nation, it must be reversed. Those farmers that have the most entrepreneurial spirit and a willingness to work for us, with us, for mutual benefit, will be handsomely rewarded with all the land, tools, training, and money they need to ensure that our agricultural sector runs efficiently and profitably. Never again will those that have been forced to give up their livelihoods for those that have not, for poverty is full of fault of the weak. Your taxes for development. Uh, there are only two things that are certain in this world, death and taxes. Russia has already had a lot of death in these past couple decades. And let's face it, what people really want now is just the assurance that today won't be their last day on Earth. As for us, we, all we want is more profits and a bigger budget so we can keep expanding our ventures, legal or otherwise. So the people don't want death, perhaps we can have a win-win deal and settle for some good old taxing every cent they have in exchange for the continued safety and security. Some might call it racketeering or extortion, but we in the Bratva are fine with just good business. Nice. Apologies for speaking fast in some of these times, but the long road home. Sergei Vorontsvaz pushed his cracked uh, spectacles up to his nose, nervously looking at the entrance of what used to be uh, his land. Ten hectares piece of land was good for a peasant farmer in the better times. Uh, Sergei shook the operation away with a shake of his head before pushing the creaking gates open and walking in, the single bag on his back weighing on his weary shoulders covered in a dusty telogreika. His house was gone, and so was his family, and while it was not something unexpected, he still felt a small painful pang in his heart, and said there was a single barn that left over the collective that farmed the land. Wandering up to it, the old Kulak dropped his bag at the doorstep, turning around and sitting down in the dusty wood and stairs to observe his returned lands. Thirty years? Forty? And Sam slowly found the wooden small cross on a rope and grass fits. Omsk, Svedlovsk, Solshad, Vokuta. They chased him further north then, followed them possible from escape, possible escape and warmer, survivable weather. Farther from home, farther from. The old man opened his mouth, clenching his teeth. I'm home, Bavara. I'm home. I told you I would, I would only be a while. A journey the length of a lifetime. Yes, more region development, please. Yes, 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 yes. And let the money flow, my friends. Well, who would have thought? When you such when you let such fine businessmen as ourselves run an entire country, we might be able to turn a ruble, ruble or two in profit. Our banks are flowing with so much gold and cash, we can't even figure out what to do with it. Our economy is being constantly reinvested with all the income we are making from local development taxes and foreign contacts with corporations from Philadelphia to Tokyo. Our farms are running so efficiently, you'd forget we were right in the smack middle in Siberia. And those cursed breadlines are a thing of the past, at least for those that accept who's on top. As for us... 
can things even get better from here? Our associates are building factory after factory, the ones unemployed masses turning out everything from shirts to cars and jet fires for our own use and for opportunistic entrepreneurs. What do they do with all those weapons they're selling? That's none of our business, as well as long as they keep paying us what we do. Profit has become the word of the day, and even minor pecans. Podcasts are swimming in the sweet, sweet cash. So long as we keep growing our ventures, the party will never end. Here's a toast to many more profitable ventures to come. If you like to buy a decrease in poverty, please go ahead. But I think I'm going to end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow as we will unite at least as much of Russia as possible. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.